In this video, we're going to talk about interpreting confidence intervals for a single mean. So we'll do a quick recap of confidence intervals for a single mean. Then we'll ask 95% of what time? Like, what does 95% actually refer to? Percent of what? And then we'll, as an example in R, we'll continue our Palmer Penguin's confidence interval example about the bill length in millimeters. So here's what happens in the world of statistics. There is some population distribution of some numerical variable of interest. In our continuing example, we're going to use the bill length of Palmer penguins. The population distribution does not have to look normal. A lot of people think that's what the central limit theorem is telling us. It is not. The population distribution does not have to look normal, but we assume that it has a population mean. <coughs> this population mean bill length of Palmer penguins is what we're interested in estimating. We want to know where the center of this population distribution is. So in the world of statistics, we take a random sample from the population, and then we theorize that if we were to take more random samples from this population, even though we probably never will, then there is a sampling distribution of the sample mean. And this thing is centered at mu hat. That is our best guess from a single sample from the population. Our best guess of the population mean from a single sample from the population. What we theorize via the central limit theorem is how this mu hat would vary if we were to take more samples from the population. And the central limit theorem tells us that despite what the population looks like, the sampling distribution of the sample mean is going to look fairly normal, centered where we want it to be, and it's going to have a width of sigma hat over the square root of the sample size, which we call the standard error. So the way we get confidence intervals is by extending from mu hat down some bit, we go mu hat minus some number of standard errors. And whatever value that is, we call the lower bound of our confidence interval. And we do the same thing in the other direction. We start with mu hat and we add some number of standard errors. And it's between these two numbers that we capture 95% of the area under the distribution. This is how we get confidence intervals in the world of statistics for single means, is basically by this formula. We get a lower and upper bound, respectively. That 95% is a little tricky to define, though. That's what we're going to talk about next. Oops. In the world of statistics, I'm just going to draw a similar picture to what we had before, but I'm going to do it a little bit differently. We theorize that there is some population mean mu that we're interested in estimating. And the way we think about a sampling distribution is by multiple people, even though this doesn't actually happen, we theorize that multiple people are estimating the population mean mu. And so the first guess might be a little bit under the value of interest. And when they take this guess and they subtract and add some number t star of standard errors, they get their own confidence interval. So this person who took their own random sample from the population of Palmer penguins and estimated a confidence interval of bill length got their own confidence interval for the, their guess. But remember, our theorizing about the sampling distribution suggests that 
another person could equally take their own random sample of Palmer penguins, come up with their own guess of the sample mean, mu hat 2, and from that they could extend to the left and extend to the right some number t star of standard errors. Now what's nice in theory by my picture about these two people who took their own random samples is that their confidence intervals capture the true population mean mu. But that doesn't have to be the case. Under the theory, there could be a third person who just by chance got a specific subset, purely by chance, no bias or anything, purely by chance got a subset of Palmer penguins whose bill lengths are larger than average, such that when they move away from their sample mean to the left and to the right to create a confidence interval, their confidence interval does not capture, does not include the true population mean mu. The fact that their confidence interval does not capture the true population mean mu is what goes into defining this 95%. What we think is, in the world of statistics, let's draw that one a little bit better. The way we think about the world of statistics is Every one of these R people could take their own random sample from the population. And each one of them could calculate their own sample mean and then their own confidence interval. 95% of the capital R people that could theoretically do this, 95% of those confidence intervals would capture, that is overlap correctly with the true population mean 95% of them would overlap with the true population mean, and 5% of these theoretically possible confidence intervals would not overlap with the true population mean. So when we say this 95%, what we mean is 95% of the theoretical they could happen even they even though they don't 95% of the theoretical confidence intervals we could take from the population mean will capture the true population mean and 5% of them will not the question you want answered but cannot be answered is which one of these people are you we don't know that's what it means to be 5% wrong there is a 5% chance that you are one of the people who does not capture the true population mean. And that's what I mean to suggest when I say we are going to narrow these confidence intervals, giving up area in the tail. We want narrower confidence intervals that are more informative rather than Garfield's weather person who has confidence intervals so wide they're uninformative. We are willing to make this trade because 95% of the time being right seems still pretty good to me. And most statisticians, in fact. So let's jump into R. We're gonna to continue to use this data set penguins. We are going to go through all the calculations we saw before. I'm just gonna pull them up really quick because if you need a recap of what these calculations are doing, please go see our last video on confidence intervals for a single mean. So we'll calculate our estimate of the population mean mu. We'll call it mu hat. We'll calculate our sample size. We'll call it the capital N. We will calculate, oh, oh, where'd it go? Our estimate of the population standard deviation. Because it's an estimate, we'll put a hat on it. We'll call it sigma hat. From that, we can calculate our standard error. We'll calculate this T star business, which gives us two numbers such that between those two numbers on a normal distribution with this many degrees of freedom, based on our sample size, we will capture 95% of the area under the distribution. And what we just spent a great amount of time doing was describing what that 95% means such that we can interpret this confidence interval.
So here goes a standard interpretation of this confidence interval. We always say we, you and your reader, is the most polite way to speak in scientific documents. We are, then you put whatever percent you have calculated from your value T star. We are 95% confident that the true population mean bill length in millimeters for Palmer Island penguins is between 43.34 millimeters and 44.5. Let's just keep that the same millimeters. This is the standard phrase we say for confidence intervals. We, you and your reader, are some percent. It will depend on whatever percent confidence interval you choose. But for now, you can basically keep these two numbers the same, such that we will always have 95% confidence. We are 95% confident that the true population mean bill length, this is the population parameter we are trying to estimate. It is a mean, and it's specifically a mean of bill length for Palmer Island penguins, is between, and then you state, rounding to one or two or three decimal places, whatever confidence interval you got. Don't forget your units. I said them twice here, only to emphasize that units count. We need to know whether this is inches or millimeters or centimeters or, uh, you know, football fields. I don't know, making up stupid units there just to make a point here. This is the structure of the sentence statisticians say. Let's try it a little bit more general. We are P percent confident because that percentage confidence can change later on, that the true popu population parameter in context of the data. So the parameter could be a mean. It's most often going to be a mean in this class, but theoretically it could be a standard deviation, and you'd have to create some new formula for a confidence interval for standard deviations or it could be a median, and you'd have to create a new formula for confidence intervals for medians. In this case, we're going to say true population parameter. Specify the context of the data. For us, it's Palmer Island penguins. Is between lower bound and upper bound units. That is the standard phrase we would say. Here is an incredibly general phrase. And here is a specific phrase to this example for Palmer Island penguins bill lengths. What you should do is add your own example. It could be with this data set, but please pick your own variable to your course notes so that you have an exact statement about uh, a confidence interval that you calculated from some data set using a different variable than I have used. I'd like you to write down your own confidence interval interpretation for your own example, but I'd also like you to try to explain via a picture like this in your mind. You have to have the picture in your mind, but you don't have to draw the picture yourself in your course notes. I'd like you to explain what that percent means. I'd like you to try to explain what is hidden behind this 95% confidence in the world of statistics. Because once you understand that, you can get a better understanding of what this world of statistics is trying to do and has to offer us.